Hey everybody, welcome back. I'm Matt. Thank you for stopping by. Now I've got a pretty special fly for you today. If uh, you're paying attention to the cicada hatch that's coming in 2021, this one is Brood X. It's coming in May or June of this year, 2021. It's going to be very heavy in the mid-Atlantic, Maryland, Pennsylvania, a little bit of West Virginia, a little bit west over in Ohio too, and then there are going to be some hatches of this brood down in southern Appalachia. This one that we've got this year, it was last seen in 2004, and of course it's coming back 17 years later, but it's a predominantly black with a, a fair amount of orange in the bug. But there are some of them out there that, that don't have the orange, they have a little bit more green, maybe some dark green. Some of the cicadas are mostly all black. So pay attention to the cicada that you're trying to imitate, and this pattern will probably work for it. You might just have to change a couple of the colors. Now this one, it was created by Jay Shepard. He's one of the senior members of the Potomac Patuxent Trout Unlimited. That's the TU chapter here in Maryland that I'm a member of. And Jay's a pretty well-known uh, master fly tire. He's got one pretty popular fly to his name called the Patuxent Special. I'm not sure when he came up with that one, but it's been in a few books, and it's a pretty popular fly around here. So this one Jay came up with, his main goal with this one was to create a really durable fly that's going to last all day and catch you a bunch of fish. Now I think he achieved it with this one. It's not hard to tie. There are no really exotic materials. doesn't take all that long. So good luck to those of you out there who are tying for this year's cicada hatch. I think you're going to like this pattern. Let's give it a shot. So there it is in the vise, the Brood X Cicada, or Brood 10. Now I'm tying this on a size 6. It's a 3x long streamer hook. Your options for this are really a 6 or an 8. And these are big bugs and you don't want to go much smaller than this. And for the thread, you're probably going to want to use some thick stuff. So I've stepped this up to a 140 uh, denier. You could even go to a 6 aught, maybe in a 3 aught or 210 denier. But go ahead and lay a base down all the way to the start of the bend. Now the first thing we're going to tie in is the 3 millimeter foam or a 1 8 inch 3 millimeter foam. This comes in square patches that are 3 inches by 4 inches. So I cut it into 8 half inch strips. So I've got a, a half inch strip right there that is, you know, 1 half by 3. And then what you want to do, you're going to cut it like this. So the first half inch is you know, you got that little bit of a triangle, and then about the length of the shank, you cut out a little notch. And, you know, it doesn't have to be perfect. I've done half a dozen of these in the last week, and none of them have been perfect. Um, but lay it on right here on the back, and then catch it in with a, a couple of wraps. And this is why you use the thicker thread. Real thin thread right there, there's a good chance you can cut this foam. And you don't want to do that. It'll be a weak spot if you do. So I'll put a couple of wraps under it and then a couple over it. Because this first part is what you really want to be careful and not have it spin on you. So just do that a couple of times. Get that wedge way up in there. And now I'm pulling on it pretty tight. It's not spinning. So we should be in pretty good shape right there. Move your thread up a couple of oh quarter inch maybe on the bare hook and catch this in almost like you're doing a hopper body a segmented hopper body do that again let's get this up here and we're going to just catch this body in you don't want to compress this too much because this is you know helps it float a little bit but there's not much that's going to sink this fly it's it's pretty much all foam so we can go oh a little bit more forward right here Again, not real tight. You don't want to start cutting into this, this foam. And I need to readjust my hook there. Okay, so let's get a few more wraps under here and a few more over it, just to really try to minimize this thing spinning on us. Okay, now take your thread back. Again, not really tight squishing wraps, but we want to take it to the back where we're going to catch in the next component which is the black and orange chenille in size medium. Now what I do here, and per the recipe, strip off about a half inch. A half inch of the fuzzy stuff until you get the, the, bare, the bare thread core 
showing right there. We're going to lay that right on top of this, this tail piece. And I'm going to catch it in with three wraps right here. Watch the point of my hook. Okay, so that should be caught in pretty well. Now let's advance our thread back up front. Loose wraps, just get it back up here. Okay, that's good. Now we're going to wrap this up. Leave the core of this, make sure it's staying back. We're going to catch that in with some glue in a bit. So just wrap this up. And the cicadas, are they vary greatly in how much orange is showing and their, their underbody. So don't worry about this, whether it's more orange and black, uh, whatever it turns out to be, it really doesn't matter. So go ahead and get it back up here. Let's catch this off with two wraps and then cut off our chenille. And if you cut your thread like I did, well, let's see if we can fix that. Ah, we can fix it. We can fix anything. I'm just gonna put a few more wraps right here in front of that thread, behind that thread. I've been cutting my thread a lot lately. This is like the, the third time in a week. That's, now I gotta pay more attention. But that's life, it happens, it happens to all of us. Okay, so now we got the foam in, we've got our, our body really. And the next component we're gonna tie in is crystal flash. This is a small size crystal flash and this is 16. This is a pearlescent color. So I'm gonna catch it in on my side. I'm gonna go ahead, some of these are, the tips aren't even, so now it's even and I'm gonna move about oh two inches forward because we're, we're going to fold this back in a second so i'm going to catch it in on this side sort of on the top um yeah that will work right there you see that broken thread it's not going to bother us at all because we got so many more wraps we're going to put on this thing okay now i've got about two inches going forward and then the whole rest of the piece going back so i'm going to cut the back piece at about two inches long as well. And hold on to that that you just trimmed because that'll be our next fly. So grab the forward pieces right here. And what you wanna do here, kinda create a little loop right there and then just put a couple of loose wraps right there. Now we position them. So we want them coming off the sides at about a 45 degree angle and a little bit down maybe. So I've got that little loop right there. See, I'm just going to pull on that until it not until there's not much of a loop left. Now I've got my legs, both of them coming off pretty close to a 45 degree angle. So I'm good with that. Just temporarily hold them back while I put a few more wraps in right here. I got one little crazy piece right there, but you know what? I'm not going to worry about it because we're going to fold this back, and it's going to when we fold that back, you won't see it. Okay. So, one thing you can do, if you have some of this, if you have some orange crystal flash, because this Brood X is a pretty orange bug, you could just use that and then you won't need to use these orange legs. But a lot of people won't have orange crystal flash and they might have this orange uh, rubber leg. So this is a size medium, yeah, medium round orange rubber legs. And I will just fold it over so I got a little loop right there and that's what I'm gonna catch in right here on top with kind of a long loop up front because we'll snip it and that'll be our front legs. So I'm gonna put two yeah, medium wraps right here and then get them situated. You want them kind of right there in the middle of, of the crystal flash wings. Okay, so kind of got them right there. Go ahead and trim this back one just to get the rest of it out of my way. And I'm gonna go ahead and snip that one right there. So before we put any more securing wraps, let's, let's adjust these legs. Just pull them a little bit down and a little bit to the side. It's, it really doesn't matter there because this thing's gonna lay flat in the water and these are just gonna splay out. And with any luck, they'll just be floating in the, in the surface film. So I'm gonna put several more wraps right here and just, just try to lock these in. And this is where I'm gonna 
you know, do my whip finish too. So take a look at that. I've got my legs coming off pretty much where the, the wings are and we're gonna trim it all to size here shortly. But before we do any gluing and fold this piece over, that's what it's ultimately gonna look like. We need to put our whip finish right there where our thread is hanging. And if you don't have a big whip finish tool, you might want to do it by hand. Uh, your fingers will probably, you know, you can open them wider than you can a whip finish tool. So if you don't know how to whip finish by hand, go to my channel. I've got a video on it. It's really not that hard. Uh, so there's one whip finish right there and that's going to hold it because we're going to put a lot of glue in this thing here in a minute. And I've got a little nub coming off right there. I need to just trim that up. Okay, so one last thing to do before we get into the, the cleanup and trimming. It is this, the contact cement. And this Gorilla Super Glue Gel has worked great. I have done several of these and one of them I weighted it and soaked it in a beaker of water for about three days and it did not come apart. So, this is a gel, and it, it's going to go on pretty thick. And you want to put it right here, capturing in this chenille, so that when we squish it down, that chenille is going to, you know, help further solidify this, this fly. This is the weak spot. According to the originator, he said the weakest spot on this is that tail. And if, if that comes apart, you know, the fly is probably done. And after you've caught a bunch of big fish on this thing, it is potentially going to come apart on you. So I'm just letting that kind of air, air dry for about five or six seconds, maybe 10 seconds. Now I'm going to fold this over and then push it down fairly tight. Now what you want to be careful of, you're going to squish some of that glue out and if you get it on your crystal flash, it'll make a little bit of a mess and then you might stick some of them together and then you might end up having to trim them or just live with them. But that's why I always do at least 16 of the crystal flash because I'll mess a few of them up and I can trim them and still have plenty for my wing. So. I will also, let's see, I haven't let go of this with my fingers yet. So 10 or 15 seconds is probably going to hold it in. But take a look at that. Can you see that glue coming out? I'm gonna take my, my bodkin right here and then just try to pull some of this out. See, so yeah, that's how much I wiped off. And then I'll wipe it on my, my rag or Kleenex here. And then maybe check the other side and see if there's any on this side. In this case, there really isn't. So what you're gonna to wanna to do after this, and I've done it for a couple of them. I'll take my you know, material clip, but I'll pull this out and then just kind of uh, grab it like this right here. And I'm just holding that in and I'll set this aside and then tie the next one. And 10 minutes later, then this one is totally dry and ready to trim. So, speaking of that, here's the last one I did. This one is totally dry and ready to trim. So, what I'll do here, you know, I'll put it back in the vise just, just for demonstration purposes, but it's really much easier to trim this thing holding it in your hand. But what you'll wanna do is um, trim this, this back piece at a good sharp angle and you know what I can't even do that very well in my vise so I'm gonna go ahead and pull it out and maybe you'll see what I'm talking about right here I just trim this at a point and you really only want maybe one or two millimeters coming off the back of that hook so we've got this one and now I can put this back in here and we can we can trim the the front legs. Front legs you want to you want to make them about a quarter of an inch, not really too much to them. And the back legs and the wings make them about the same, and just a little bit maybe past the the length of the fly because they're going to flare out 
that's your 45 degree angle right there. So let's do that on both sides right here. Okay, so top view right there. And we've still got a big blocky head, so you're gonna to want to come in here and be careful not to accidentally cut your legs, but just cut this at an angle and, and trim up your front head until you get you know, more of a bug looking front head. Again, this is a little bit easier to do when it's not in your vise. And optional, but a lot of people do it, big orange eyes. Just take some big blobs on each side of orange eyes. I envision this thing laying in the water flat. So fish is gonna see that right there. A silhouette of a big, you know, chunky bug with some wings outsplayed. So I would say the eyes are optional, but by all means, paint some big orange eyes on it if you want to. So that's it, my friends. It's not a real difficult tie. There's no exotic materials. Uh, when you're not talking about it and making a video, you really, after about three of them, you can make this thing in probably you know six minutes or so, plus the drying time to wait to trim it. But it's not a hard bug. It's very durable, and it's gonna do great for you on this Brood X Cicada Hatch of 2021. So that's it, everybody. Y'all take care. We'll see you next time.